Hi guys, I uh, was in my basement the other day and I found this 1.44 megabyte floppy disk. I was throwing them out and I noticed they were written QNX on it. And being a BlackBerry developer and knowing that the foundation of BlackBerry 10 is based on QNX, I was curious to find out what this is. And uh, I dug up an old laptop which I have here, a trusty old uh, Dell Inspiron. 7500 and it happens to have a floppy drive and all these things are hard to find these days nobody has floppies anymore but I wanted to show you what boots up I think it's a piece of history that we can't throw out and it's quite neat so let me turn things on here and uh, see what happens now the machine may be on already I have to turn it down because I'm not sure what's happening with it so let me try that again I'll put this in the drive okay and let's boot this thing up here we go it's trying something there's the system it's on the BIOS up screen and it looks like it's loading from the BIOS or from the uh, floppy and there we go. Qnix Demo Disk Loader version 1.5. So here it goes. This is an entire operating system on a 1.44 uh, megabyte floppy. Now, you don't realize the size here. We're not talking gigabyte here. We're talking megabyte. It's a thousand times smaller than 1.44 gigs. So we're talking minuscule. And the developers of Qnix were able to make it such so efficient and they were able to create this demo disk um, to try to realize the potential of uh, you know the OS on such a small platform. So here we go. Welcome to the incredible 1.44 QNX demo, and it has a modem uh, driver in it as well. Stored on the single 1.44 megabyte floppy disk is a demo copy of the QNX real-time operating system, Photon Micro GUI windowing system, web page uh, browser, TCP/IP internet dialer embedded web server, editor, file browser, vector graphics, animation, a television, set-top box simulation. Just think if we could do all this with the 1.44 megabyte floppy, imagine the devices you could build with QNIX real-time technology. So here we go. Um, if you don't have a modem, you won't be able to connect to the internet, let's say. Just press spacebar to continue. So here we go. It's asking me for keyboard, so I'll press F1 for North America and that's the progress indicator down there detecting hardware so it takes a few seconds to do this but uh, you know I was really surprised and I thought I'd share this with uh, everyone out there who's especially a BlackBerry user because this is really the history behind what's running our um, phones with uh, QNIX and BlackBerry 10 and, and the future with QNIX under BlackBerry's uh, um, you know guidance so here we go. We're going to continue without a modem. And here we go. All right. So we have a an end user demo license. Let me just get my mouse here. I go I accept. Okay. It's asking for display mode. Now I was playing around with this earlier and I realized that we have 256 color and I can get up to 1024 by 768 on this particular system. So I'll go apply it's going to try to get into that mode there we go and I'll agree to it okay and done so there we have it we're in this is QNIX running off of the floppy you can see here QNIX build a more reliable world the incredible 1.44 megabyte demo now this is a web um, web browser let's see it's called Voyager Voyager client demo that's built on. Okay, so we're looking at vintage 1999. It's a, almost 15 years ago. So you can imagine, uh, you know, the amount. And, you know, QNIX has been around since the 80s. So you're going to see uh, a little bit more about that here. Let's go back and, uh, you know, click here on how we did it. How did we fit a POSIX real time OS full windowing system? HTML 3.2 browser, web server, internet dialer, TCP IP and more onto a single 1.4 M floppy. Now this is, I'm not going to read it all for you, um, but there's quite a lot here. 
and uh, it talks about you know maybe a little bit more technical stuff than we want to hear about it talks about the Cunix real-time OS photon micro GUI windowing system Voyager uh, TCP IP how they embedded into the floppy um, you know how do you support so many graphics cards and so on a lot of boot info um, uh, you know technical info about how it runs um, a tribute to the author so kudos to Dan Hildebrand um, 1961 to 1998 uh, he was able to squeeze this what we think is impossible into the possible and there we have it now I'm gonna run a few things down here as you'll notice there is a uh, a spot at the bottom here I can I'll zoom in so you can see there is uh, the menu and we'll, we're able to launch uh, I'm gonna launch Qnix as cool and here you've got a little vector graphics uh, animation running in a window I'll zoom out okay and that's I'm gonna leave that running over here on the side okay we have also towers of Hanoi and that looks like it's a it's a web based uh, game we're gonna just solve it here and it's gonna go through all the steps and uh, solve it and move everything over I've also got what else do we have here we configure display we have a notepad a file browser you can open this up and we get this and you'll be able to see the file structure on the disk here resources uh, dev so there's a few things there uh, and I was, I was looking for some kind of a shell that I could run in and uh, you know get access to the file system directly or try to at least see if it supports any commands I, I can't seem to figure out how to do it it might be just to, because it's doesn't support it because it is a, a demo <clears throat> but the Windows system is here and we have also um, what else down here there's a few more gems on here um, <clears throat> we can configure the display remove some extensions uh, I'm just gonna go back to the web browser here and just spend a little more time looking at that so we've got um, we're going back up to home <clears throat> and it talks about surfing the webs generating dynamic HTML, extending the OS functionality, troubleshooting, and so on. About Qnix, you know, go with the leader, business philosophy, product strategy, strategic alliances. So you've got lots of information here about Qnix. Talks about history of firsts, markets, customers, and so on. So that's Qnix for you. Lots of write-up you can see here. These are all the partners that they've had, our customers. You can see many, many, many companies. Um, a little bit of the history. 1981, first microkernel OS. And then it goes on and on and on. Now, you know, keep in mind, BlackBerry didn't enter the scene until way later than this. Um, 1998. And these guys were just on their own. BlackBerry didn't acquire Qnix until recently anyway. So they were independent. But, um, you know, they were developing this very fast secure and reliable uh, system well before and uh, you know that's a lot of that goes to you know making the BlackBerry 10 um, you know the reliability that it has and the speed uh, let's go back here again a little bit and just see uh, what is this oh, Qnix and related products so operating systems you know, Qnix is meant to be able to run banks, hospitals, and more, right? Um, the Photon Micro GUI windowing system, and so on and so forth. So, anyway, just a little quick demo. That's the original disk. I don't have the actual original. I have this copy, but still, 
it uh, does run. It won't run on them faster, newer computers, so I had to dig up an old laptop like my Dell Inspiron in order for it to actually boot up and load, but um, because I guess the drivers now and the video cards are a lot different or they may not be completely compatible. But here you are. So Qnix for sure is cool. And I just wanted to show you what you can do with Qnix on a 1.44 mega, megabyte floppy. Again, the, the size you can't really comprehend nowadays because we can fit you know a gig is like nothing um, this is 1.44 megabytes it's tiny it's about I would say it's about the size of a photo on um, you know that you take with your phone one picture only is about a thousand and some odd K that's the size of this entire operating system on this boot disk right over here just incredible incredible what it can do right here Qnix OS on a floppy and I'm gonna shut down so let's do the shutdown sequence I'm not sure if it does much here it just sort of goes through and that's it just turns right off and we're back into the boot um, system here the the screen for the BIOS so thank you very much and hope you enjoyed that demo ciao now